All right, welcome back to the channel. Dr. Mark P. Otten here from Cal State Northridge with the first of two special uh, videos, uh, psychology of golf videos for you coming from Hawaii. <laughs> the psychology of golf in Hawaii. Woohoo! That was my tripod falling over in the wind. There is a lot of wind over there. Uh, it seems. So, where was I in particular for this uh, video here? I was at Kahuku Golf Course, which is at the north uh, east corner of Oahu, and it happens to be my favorite golf course of all time. And it's probably not, like, I should explain. <laughs> because it's probably not your, I mean, if you went to Oahu and played golf, it, this would probably not be your favorite, I'm guessing. But the reason it's my favorite, and there are multiple reasons actually, is because number one, it's affordable. Number two, it has ocean views. Number three, it's very natural, like not pretentious. Um, the the It's not well manicured. I mean, if you're looking for like uh, high quality... Um, bunkers and fairways and tee boxes it this is the opposite of that like it's just completely natural i don't even know if they water the course <laughs> but they get a lot of rain and this is just the i mean it's, it's as if you're playing at a beach park next to the ocean with nobody keeping track of of what's there and the condition i'm sure there are folks who keep track but i don't think they do it very closely and yet for me, the, the whole vibe, the whole feeling that when you're there is just unmatched. It's, it's completely unique to me. And um, I mean, there's, there, if you think about the history of golf in the UK and Ireland, I mean, I'm guessing folks didn't manicure courses the way they do today. Uh, at the beginning, they probably left them pretty natural. It was a place that got a lot of rain just like this. So anyway, I'm thinking like, this is how golf is meant to be played when I'm out there. And this is the psychology of golf. So when I'm thinking that I enjoy this course so much, this is my third time lucky enough to have played this course three times now. Now I know I enjoy it. And so I just try to use that enjoyment and not feel a lot of pressure. Oh my gosh, I'm back to my favorite course. We can talk about that too. But just try to enjoy. And the, the other side of this this is that the, uh, the, some of the fairways are extremely wide open. You can relax a little bit here and there and just enjoy the game. So, first of all, a shout out to Turtle Bay. So this is the view as you're going to the driving range at Turtle Bay. Turtle Bay is just down the street. It's like a couple miles away. And it's got two golf courses that are kind of like modern golf courses. And it's got ocean views like this. I mean, you're looking at the, this is the ride to the driving range in a golf cart at Turtle Bay. So what I did was I went there first. It's a it's a resort, lots of amenities. Uh, I checked in there and I paid twenty five dollars. And they give you a golf cart because it's it's I mean you go into that forest there, <laughs> and then you come out and you're at a driving range with all grass. So this is a shout out to their practice facilities at Turtle Bay. Um, and it was that was important for me because I was using rental clubs, which I hadn't hit yet. By the way, if you're looking for a deal on rental clubs, I recommend um, going into Waikiki or Honolulu and not renting at um, any particular golf course because they might charge you a little bit more. So for $40 a day, I got rental clubs at Hawaii Golf Rentals in Waikiki. But I hadn't hit them yet. So here I was at, at uh, getting ready to play Kahuku. Kahuku does not have a practice facility at all. So I'm, I'm like, what should I do? So I go to Turtle Bay, get my practice session in. They have a chipping and a putting area too there, which is very nice. Um, so I got to enjoy a little bit of the upscale feeling for $25. Didn't play the Turtle Bay golf course this trip. You could. Uh, in the summer, I think it's between $1 to $200 to play. So it's, you know, it's the next, um, the, the next section of your checkbook, your, uh, <laughs> your budget would go to that. 
And it's, I mean, it was, it was fantastic, Turtle Bay. So nothing negative to say about them. But then I went over to Kahuku and played for $30. And by the way, if you're a, um, if you're a local resident of Hawaii, these rates are much lower. So um, if you're a visitor, it's $1 to $200 to play Turtle Bay. If you're a local resident, it's less than half of that. Kahuku, I think if you're a local resident, you can play for less than $10. <laughs> it is a nine-hole course, as you'll see. So anyway, I was uh, first uh, here at Turtle Bay, getting my practice in, getting a cool, I mean, there's just super cool views going to and from the driving range. So then it's, what, five, ten minutes uh, around the corner to Kahuku. Kahuku is right around the corner from, there's a bunch of food trucks, Giovanni's food truck, I like Ty's Beach Bus. They give you a waffle on a stick. So it's, <laughs> it's a very unassuming area, right up against the ocean, though. And then you get to the Kahuku, you're like, is this it? And look at this clubhouse. It's like, is that a clubhouse? Or it's like a trailer. And it's just, I mean, it looks terrible. <laughs> it just So when I actually, when I drove by this place for the first time, I was like, are you kidding? I'm not going to play here. And I actually drove away. <laughs> I did not, I, I brushed off what would become my favorite golf course of all time because of the look. I mean, okay, so then you see the, the, the ocean in the back there. And, but in between the, the beautiful ocean and the terrible looking trailer is the golf course there. And it's, I mean, it's not that green, but like I said earlier, there's so much to this place that I had not yet discovered when I, at first when I brushed it off. So... With that, let's get into it. Uh, here comes the scorecard. Nine-hole course. Uh, it is, I feel, so, okay, so another shout-out here. There's, I'm going to put a link in the description. Um, Eric Anders Lang is a YouTube guy who I watch a lot, um, and he has a really cool feature on Kahuku's history. So I'm going to put that link down in the description. Um, and it, it kind of explains, I think, a little bit why this uh course is unconventional and why um i mean you see it on the scorecard here so there's what three par fives there's four par threes and two par fours <laughs> that's not a usual combination i don't think it was master planned it was just like let's try to follow the land and what it offers us way back in the day ends up being a par 35 with with all kinds of character and quirks so let's get into the first hole here First hole is wide open with like, it's, it shows a bunker on the left, but like that's, I mean, it's like a little dirt patch. <laughs> and uh, if you're, um, if you're new to the channel, uh, I mean, welcome. This is a cool one to, to check out because Kahuku is so unique. Um, uh, but if you're new to the channel, you don't know, I give each hole a rating, a set of ratings and I call it either a birdie par or a bogey hole. This one's a bogey hole because it's slightly um, less fun than it is scary. So this one, it gets a fun rating of seven out of the nine holes. So why is it not that fun? Well, some of the other holes are just super fun. <laughs> I feel like the least fun hole at Kahuku for me is still more fun than most other holes in the world uh, just because of, of, the, of what you'll see. So anyway, uh, a little bit scary in that, I mean, it's a, you're teeing off first hole, so it's a unique environment. Usually at this um, point, and I'll show you the, the look here, at this point you're a little bit elevated, and I mean, the primary challenge, I think, to Kahuku, uh, aside from trying to not be distracted by all the ocean views, <laughs> and also sometimes the turf is not a little bit, it's a little bit... Um, you know, it's not manicured, so you might get a weird lie here and there. But the primary challenge, I would say, is the wind. You're right along the ocean, like I said, northeast corner of Oahu. Um, you're in paradise, essentially, along the ocean. <laughs> so the, the wind is blowing, uh, in these tropical breezes. And you'll get weather, that, like you'll get rain that starts and stops five minutes later. So primary challenge in the first hole is getting used to all that, I would say. And the green is small. So uh, here we've got a right to left wind. And it is, yes, it is hard to um, keep the tripod from blowing over. <laughs> so 
So I'm just trying to aim um, right of center here and let the wind kind of blow it back to the left. I'm excited. I'm like, woohoo, I'm back to Kahuku and I'm filming. I'm going to tell everyone how cool this course is. So the excitement, I think, led me to a really nice shot there. I got on the green. Uh, the, the ball curved right to left perfectly. And so right away, I've got a birdie putt that's like not super long. Um, and I'm just trying to, like, my psychology right now is I'm just trying to get used to the situation. A birdie would be like tremendous. I wouldn't expect it. Oh, so close. It rimmed out. So that was a fantastic uh, start. Par for me on the first hole. Let's get on to number two. The fireworks uh, for me, the, the, the excitement, the thrills really start on hole three. So hole two is like you step up there, you're like, man, I got all the space in the world for my tee shot. Uh, <laughs> so you're not scared at all, really, at the beginning. Um, the, the green, the, the, the area behind the green starts to tighten up a little bit. There's not a lot of room behind the green. So um, that's the only real um, challenge here or uh, place that you get squeezed on this hole, uh, aside from the, the wind, of course. The wind is ever-present here. So uh, we've got a left to right breeze coming up here. Fear rating pretty low. Fun rating also pretty low because it, it's just a wide open par five. It's a scoring opportunity for anybody with, um, with distance off the tee because you've got a lot of space and you've got a 457 yard par five. By the way, there are no blue tees here. <laughs> it's all just white tees and there's a red. There's just two sets. So anyway, I hit it uh, left of center here. The wind blew it back nicely. Uh, to keep me out of trouble. So I've got a second shot here, three wood. You can see the rough is is just rough. I mean, it's like kind of just a dirt patch back there. So they must take care of the place a little bit if the fairway is, is in better condition than the rough. <laughs> but it's, sometimes you can't tell if you're in the rough or the fairway. Uh, so anyway, very natural here and, and just a lot of personality to this course. So I hit a pretty good three wood, getting used to my rental club still. We'll talk about rental clubs here. Uh, a little bit as we go along, uh, trying to derive confidence from clubs that you haven't used much before is uh, is tricky sometimes. So this is a pitching wedge uh, from about less than 100 yards, and I started out right at the flag, and the wind blew it way over to the right, so my birdie opportunity is is there, but it's not a real uh, a real um, good one. You can see the clouds blowing by there. We're looking back inland here. And again, I mean, you just, the weather is changeable, so stay tuned. You can also see the putt rolling uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, a little bit bumpy on the greens. But like, you know, again, like, the, is this the way golf was intended? Maybe just, you know, the, the greens are not fast. But, the, you know, there's not a lot of mystery to them. Okay, so... Par, par to start. I was excited. Okay, hole three is when things get real interesting, I think, at this course. Uh, you're elevated now, and you're, you've got an ocean view, which I'll show you in a minute. This hole is fear rating one, despite being handicapped seven and only a, a par 349 yards. So why is it so scary? Well, I'll show you that in a second. Fun rating two. It's a little bit more scary than fun, but not by much. This hole is fantastic. So you're walking up the hill behind the green from hole number two. I'm just showing you the view here. And you're going to do an ocean view here, which, I mean, ocean views are plenty. But this one, you're, you're up high, so you can see it real well. And then the hole is off in the distance there with all kinds of vegetation on the left. Okay, so the thing about this hole is that, I mean, I, I've played this course three times. It's always windy over here. I, I don't know, like, and especially, like, when you're up elevated like this along the ocean. Like, I, maybe there's some days where it's not windy, but I feel like it's probably always windy. <laughs> and the wind is blowing left to right and a little bit against you here. So, what would that be, uh, east, east wind? So, like, it's going to push it away from the ocean. So, the temptation is to hit it toward the ocean and let it fade back toward the hole. But you're hitting it toward the ocean. So like if you hit it left, you're in the bushes and or the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so the safe side really is to the right here. But when you're looking at it, it just looks like a small target with lots of wind in your face and pushing it around. And 
the green is not big and there's a couple of tears to the green. Oh man. So this is like, uh, I mean, this is a hard hole to get, understand what to do the first time you, you, you play it and I'm still trying to get it. So this time I was like, okay, I'm going to aim left side of the green, not too far left. But, and then I, yeah, I had my, uh, rental five iron, which I was still getting used to. So I played it way, way off to the right by accident. Luckily there's, there's grass over there. It's just going to be a, an uphill chip coming back to a small green. And if you launch it over, you're probably in the junk in the, in the bushes along the ocean. So <laughs> this was a, a tense, tricky chip. And I actually hit a good one. And even though I hit a good one, I still almost rolled down off the the back there, I guess that would be the left side. But look at this view that you can see the waves crashing behind me. I mean, do you just want to like go and watch the ocean instead of trying to make this difficult putt? <laughs> oh man. And, and it's not just an ocean view. It's like one where you're elevated and you can see the, the, the detail out there. Oh man. It's so nice. Okay. So let's get to another hole. That's very similar. Par four. I'm sorry. Par three hole number four. This is a birdie hole, fun rating one, the most fun hole on my favorite golf course of all time. <laughs> oh man, so what, how, do, how should I describe 110 yard handicap nine, it's supposed to be the easiest hole in the golf course. And it is anything but that, <laughs> in my view, in the psychology of it. First of all, let's pause and talk about, I'm walking up to my favorite hole on my all time favorite golf course. Is it my favorite hole in the world? It's in the conversation. Probably not, but close. <laughs> Just because it doesn't stand out over hole three that much to me. But giving it fun rating, number one. So, like, what's the psychology of this situation? You're playing a, a hole that, I mean, for me, I've, I've been lucky enough to play this course a couple times. That helps because it's not like this is my only chance in my entire life to play this hole. Um... So, so if it was, let's say you're in a situation where you're playing a destination course far away or a course that costs a lot of money, or maybe you got a, got a special deal that you don't think you're going to be able to get again somewhere, and you're like, this is the only chance, that adds a pressure that is probably a little too much. Like, your only chance to play this hole in your whole life, and it's a great hole, and it's a favorite, and you're like, man. Okay, so... Like, I didn't have that so much this time because I, again, this is not my first time playing the course. Since it's $30, if we ever come back to Oahu, which hopefully we will, I'll probably play this course again. So this is just my chance today to play this hole as opposed to ever. And so that helps. I think that's definitely a, uh, you know, a, a something to lean on in terms of psychology playing this hole or any hole that I really enjoy on this course, which is most of them, all of them actually. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, some of that pressure can be good. And if it's, a, if it's a course you enjoy, then just feed off of that positive energy, that excitement that you feel. And if you're feeling good in that way, eh, maybe there's no limit to how much pressure you should have because it's positive pressure. It's excitement as opposed to nerves or um, the downside of, of um, a, big, a big deal. So, okay, let's get back to it. So here's the hole. First of all, the view off of the tee box, we're still elevated. And as you come around here, you're gonna see the green, which is way down below. So there's a big drop off here. And then my favorite hole, it has a mat for a hitting, like a, like a driving range style mat for a tee box. How about that? <laughs> So I was reading a review online of this course and, you know, people have uh, different things that they look for. And so the, the guy was like, my only, my only complaint is that on the fourth hall, you get a, a mat instead of a real tee box. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's kind of tacky looking, but it gives the place character. And obviously, I mean, it's, this is, I mean, there's a staircase to your right. This is a unique location. You're, it's probably the 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 most tucked away location on the course and so for whatever reason probably off to the left there they used to have a tee box on grass and it just didn't hold up well in terms of the conditions i don't know but one thing one tip one insider tip here is if you 
um, bring a rubber T, you know, like for your, like you would bring to the driving range, bring a short one so you can hit an iron off of that rubber T because there's a little hole in the mat. I didn't do that. <laughs> so I just hit it off the mat and I was kicking myself because I was like, oh, I remember I should have done that. Yeah, but, but you also don't want a tee that's way up high because you're hitting like a wedge. So anyway, a short driving range rubber tee would be useful here. Okay, so I haven't really captured why it's so much fun. Um, certainly not because of the mat. I mean, that adds some character certainly as well. But the wind here, so you're at another high elevation point, and the wind is usually blasting here. And, um, and then there's the elevation drop. So I was like, okay, I know the wind is gonna go left to right, but I forgot about the elevation drop when I was hitting. So I took a nine iron, which was a total mistake. Like there's strategy here. Like, you know, you're, the wind is coming, but it's a side wind. So you aim left of the green, it'll blow it back, but then it's not gonna affect the, the um, it's not gonna knock your ball down. So I took a nine iron, I should have taken a pitching wedge or maybe even a sand wedge. <laughs> so even with all of this, I, mean, I was distracted. And then we like from shooting that um, that uh, intro uh, video here to the view. From that time, a couple minutes later, when I'm getting ready to hit the ball, rain comes in. So now it looks like a rainstorm, which again only lasted a few minutes. It was right during my my tee shot here so it's just it's just an experience man this this hole and i i wonder if it rains more on this hole than the rest of the course it might okay so i started it left of the green here but then the wind just totally pushed it way over and there's a fence over there it went over the fence in the rain and i was it's in, i'm in jail over there because you can't hit it through that fence you, it's like blocking the the from where i am to the green so I, I decided to take a drop down there and play my third shot. But man, that was, it's just, I mean, so I should have, like I said, taken a different club. <laughs> but the previous time I played this hole, I think it was last year, I, I, did, I did it correctly, landed on the green, and I was so excited. So next time, Kahuku, I'm going to get on that green at that tee shot. Woo. Okay. So now we're down lower elevation. The neighbor, there's a few houses in a modest looking neighborhood behind here. Uh, so you can see those back there. I'm just trying to get up and down now for bogey because I had to take that penalty shot, a penalty stroke. And so here I'm like, ah, I really want to not have this be, this hole be a, a double and a disaster because I just forgot which club to use. And I just didn't hit a very good putt. So. Now I'm like, oh, the rain is stopping, or it's slowing down a lot. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks for raining only when I needed to hit that tee shot. Ah, yeah. Anyway, on to, on to hole number five. Hole number five is like a respite. Like you get hole three, hole four. Those are like these spectacular par threes. Spectacular to me, anyway. Um, just with the scenery and the, the variety and the strategy and the wind and everything. Hole number five is a 310 yard par four. It's the only one that's kind of away from the ocean behind the hill on the whole course. So finally, you're not distracted by an ocean view. And in this, in, on this particular day, uh, in fact, they moved the tees forward. I was hitting from the red tee, which was under 300 yards. And I had a, a nice new driver as part of my uh, rental club set. So I was like, hmm, time to drive the green. <laughs> Fun rating nine, so it's like, oh, for those reasons I just mentioned, it's not as remarkable, this hole. There's some houses on the left, you'll see. Fear rating nine as well, because it's, again, it's wide open. You step up here, you're like, man, I got all the room in the world. The green is not super big, but there's just plenty of room on both sides, uh, especially the left. So I'm going to, this is kind of a funny result here. I'm going to hit a, a drive. I hit it well. It, the, the wind pushed it again to the left. So I'm going to be left of the green. But you're going to see me wave my arm here for some reason. And I'm going to show you a replay of what happened. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom in. There is a pedestrian, a random person, walking by behind the green. If you're looking carefully, you'll see. And I hit my ball. I'm like, oh, it's going right towards that person. And he or she waved. 
when the ball landed. I didn't see it until it was about to land, so I didn't say anything. The person didn't seem to care. And, like, with Kahuku, there's a beach, and you're going to see a closer view here. There's a beach right along the, the, the ocean side of the course. And so people just walk from the neighborhood or wherever they are <laughs> across the middle of the course. Nobody cares. And it, it's usually pretty empty out there in my experience. There's not a, a ton of golfer traffic. So the people are like, yeah, I'm just going to walk to the beach. There's a trail that goes kind of around the course that I think you're supposed to take. But this person was just like, meh, I don't see any golfers out here. I'm just going to walk to the beach and back. And then they were walking back, and I was hitting my driver <laughs> straight straight towards them. Just part of the experience. Again, this place has a ton of character. And the low-key vibe, the, the relaxed feeling out there is just really something to draw from, learn from, I think. It's like almost like my score doesn't matter, almost. Because I'm just out here among the, the folks and the beach and the elements and Hawaii. Whew. Okay, so here I am chipping with a nine iron under the tree to get out of trouble here because my uh, drive was so far left toward that person. So I overshot it a little bit because the ball rolled down the hill. Um, so now I've got a birdie putt. That was, I mean, this is, again, it's a short par four. So it's a, if, you're, if you're trying to recover from those um, par threes that we just had that were intense, <laughs> this is a good hole. It's a good recovery hole. So I left that putt a little bit short, but that was just a birdie putt. And I'm, I'm trying to make par here to save face, and I do. So on to the sixth hole. The, the fifth hole served a purpose there, not just to acquaint me with the, the local pedestrians, but... <laughs> And to get me back on track a little bit, um, not completely, but a little bit, uh, and, and make par. Okay, six hole. Six hole is another par three with another uh, a tremendous view at the top, which I'll show you. You're down. This one is, is the opposite of hole four. Hole four, you were up high, hitting to a low target. Here, you're on a low, uh, you're at a low tee box, hitting to a high target up the hill, and it's straight against the wind. So... Man, like the getting the distance right on your iron here is crucial. 119 yards, um, but really you probably want to play for about 140 in my experience, maybe 135, um, because you're just going straight into the wind, and the wind seems to be always blowing. <laughs> so the fear rating comes from trying to select the right club, and also uh, once you get up toward the green, the left side is just like a huge drop off. There's grass over there. It's playable, but like if you go left, you're going to be rolling down the hill trying to get back up and it's going to be tricky. So the play here is to, is to go right side. That's what I did. Um, not necessarily right of the green. You want to just kind of stay right side of the green. <laughs> I went right of the green as it were. Fun rating five. It's sort of middle of the pack, but man, again, these these holes, they're just so much fun. You see the sand here kind of creeping into to the front. That's not a bunker. That's just natural sand <laughs> coming in at Kahuku. So I did start it at the right side of the green, which is what I wanted, but it faded, and the wind kind of pushed the fade a little bit extra to the right. So before I show you my golf ball, I just want to show you what you see as you walk up the hill to this green. It's just memorable, man. Like, I just... I. I mean, again, it's not always about the score here. It's just you walk up, you're like, man, should I just go to the beach? Should I? It's just right there. I could just come back to my... The other thing is, like, you could probably leave your stuff and come back. I mean, I don't know. Somebody might steal your clubs. But other than that, you could come back. The course is fairly low track. I mean, I, there's not a lot of golfers out here in my experience. So you could just kind of go to the beach for an hour and then come back and finish your round. Where else could you do that? Oh, man. Anyway. All right. So this is kind of looking the other way. My, my shot, as I mentioned, was right of the green. This is probably not going to be my favorite video uh, capture of the day. Because uh, as you can see, I'm down in this like dirt kind of... I should have played it like a bunker shot because I was had a tough lie. Oh, I just needed to get another three feet, but no, it rolls back down again. Oh, gosh. So now I've got another chip for par. This is tough psychologically because you're like, man, maybe I'm going to do this again. Maybe I'm going to chip it again. It's going to roll back again. Oh, gosh. So you got to clear that thought out of your head a little bit. 
and focus on the positive and focus on what you can do. And I managed to do that here, uh, which is, hey, I've got a sand wedge that's a rental sand wedge, but I've been hitting it pretty well today. So there was that one exception there, but, um, but then I managed to recover well. So just get that negative thought out of your head. And meanwhile, enjoy this ocean view once you get up on the green. <laughs> I'm like, oh, again. I mean, you know, the green, the, the, the grass is not super green, right? But is it supposed to be? Hmm. Okay, well, that's a nice putt to save bogey. I needed that because I didn't want to have another double on these par threes, these intense par threes. Or we could just stare out at this view again for a little while. <laughs> all right, well, let's talk about rental clubs for a minute while we um, recover from all these ocean views. We got more coming. All right, so I had hit the rental clubs at the Turtle Bay driving range just before I got here. And like I was trying out all the clubs. Um, one thing that, that I would recommend if you're not, if you, if you try like a, let's say you're like, I don't use a hybrid club. I typically don't use a hybrid. I use a low iron, like a two iron. So if the, if the set comes with a hybrid, which it did, I would say don't, for me, I, I did, I just didn't use it. Didn't even try it on the driving range. Not used to it. Not going to try it. So I tried to match the type of club as closely as possible with my real clubs at home and then just learn the clubs from there. The other thing I, I tried to do was just act normal. <laughs> this is normal. I would hit a, I, normally I would hit a seven iron here, so I will hit a seven iron here. And just not think about the fact that that seven iron might be different than the one that I have at home. And for the most part, that approach worked. Um, and here at Kahuku, you have some different options too. You don't have to hit a, a hybrid. You can hit a low iron or you can hit a three wood or whatever. Uh, makes you comfortable. So that's my initial tip on rental clubs. More to come on that in my other upcoming Hawaii video because it became more of a thing. It became more of an issue at the other course that I played. Okay, back to the course here. Hole number seven. Now we're right along the ocean. Hole seven and hole eight, not just like with an ocean view. In fact, the view isn't great because you're like on the same elevation. You're, you're right at sea level. So you'll see that what that looks like here in a minute. Um, and you're just going parallel. So yes, you could hit the ball into the ocean if you go too far right. <laughs> so this is handicap one, meaning it's supposed to be the hardest hole in the golf course. I think that's due to the 552 yards. That's the, the, the length. Uh, it's a long way, par five. A challenge for beginning golfers. Kahuku is great for beginning golfers overall. This one might wanna move your ball a little bit forward. Um, because you've got a long way to go. Fear rating, not that high. Yes, you could hit the ball in the ocean on the right side, but like, man, there's so much room to the left. Um, it just, pre like, the, the visual presents itself as, like, something very comfortable looking. So let's, let's see what that looks like. I mean, really, there's no hazard. There's a small bunker, a few small trees on the left. There's the massive Pacific Ocean on the right. So just go left. <laughs> And that's what I did. I actually kind of hit it center, but then the, the wind will push it left. And that's what I wanted. So I was pretty comfortable with that. Uh, I think I cleared that little bunker over there on the left side too. Meanwhile, the view. Okay, so I mentioned we're at sea level now, or just a few feet above it. So if you look to your right, there's all these little, I mean, there's a bunch of them. There's these little pathways to the, to the ocean. And again, you'll see like residents, whoever, just walking out there. Um, but overall it's empty on the golf course and it's empty on the beach. So like, I don't know, this is like your own personal playground. You know, that's the way it feels like you can golf, you can go to the beach, you can do whatever you want. Nobody's really checking up on you. Wow. It's just so cool. So anyway, to be playing right alongside the ocean and the beach like that is, is, I mean, for $30 too, did I mention I like this place? All right, so I'm technically in the rough here along the left side, um, but I'm hitting three wood because the rough is similar to the fairway. <laughs> and I just tried to punch it out there so I could chip, yeah, have a nice chip. This one came perilously close, actually. I got scared because it was a little bit close to the, the vegetation along the ocean, but luckily the wind pushed it back left. 
And so it was actually a super good result. I'm hitting the rental three wood well here, which is very nice. Renders the hybrid club further um, useless and a good decision to leave that in the car. <laughs> All right, so here's one of my uh, best shots of the day. It's a chip and it almost goes in for eagle. Give me a tap in birdie, I'm so excited. This is my tap in birdie for hole number seven. A birdie at Kahuku. Oh, yeah. Okay. Back to plus three. Last time I played the course, back in my mind, last time I played the course, I was at plus three. So I'm like, hmm, now I'm back to plus three. Maybe, maybe there's a chance. I mean, again, it's not always about score when you're playing this course. But now I'm back in my mind, I'm like, eh, maybe I could, I could do pretty well here. Okay. That's what a, a birdie will do for you. So we go on to hole eight. Trying to use that positive energy. I've talked on the channel before about how do you how do you uh, follow up a good hole, a birdie, or whatever it is. Just try to use that energy. Just try to believe that you can do something good again, as opposed to like, well, that was my one for the day. A lot of people, a lot of guys, I've heard say stuff like that. Well, that's my quota. <laughs> but if you believe, hey, maybe I can do something good again. Maybe not another birdie right away, but use that using that positive energy is the goal here. And we've got another super fun hole. So this one is the other one that goes right along the ocean uh, at, at approximately sea level, so parallel to the beach. And the fun rating outweighs the fear rating again a little bit here. This one, however, is a tighter fairway, I want to say, than... Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's, let's look at the ocean first. <laughs> We're actually as close as you'll ever, ever get right here. The tee box for hole number eight. That pathway there is just straight to the to the beach. Oh man! And the sun's coming out now. Well, a little bit. Okay, back to the course. <laughs> uh, this this fairway is a little tighter than it was for hole number seven. So I would say there's a little bit more uh, to think about here. I actually hit this ball, and for all intents and purposes, it should have gone on the beach because I hit it right and I faded it, but the wind blew it back. <laughs> Thank you to the wind in this case. And I got, I mean, look at this lie. I got lucky. The lie is like right along the edge of junk and the beach, the path that goes along the beach. Woo. Okay. Lucky here. Thanks to the uh, golf gods for uh, saving me on hole number eight a little bit here. Here, I'm just trying to punch out of the, uh, the tough lie. I thought I hit a good shot here, actually, uh, but it's blind. The second shot is blind. If I, if I pause it here, there's like a that path. This is the path that you're supposed to walk on if you're going to the beach. <laughs> so this is the one where legitimately pedestrians are supposed to be. Of course, they don't always take it, as uh, you might recall from a few holes ago. <laughs> but okay, so as long as there's nobody walking along here, you you clear that that path, and then there's like a a drop, uh, elevation drop to the green. So you can't really see. There's a post that they put up, which is supposed to be the target. I think it's behind the green. Um, so I'm aiming for that post, um, and I'm, I'm noting on my uh, GPS that there's a bunker on the right side. But I'm like, yeah, bunker, whatever. Like, these bunkers aren't real. Well, this was a real bunker. <laughs> so I faded the ball like I wanted to, but I hit it straight into the bunker, and there's real sand in here. So this was a real bunker shot, as opposed to some of the others you might see, which are more like dirt bunkers here at Kahuku. Managed to get out uh, safely, left myself a long putt as opposed to a short one for par. So this, I walked up here thinking, uh, I'll just try to try to two putt and get out with a bogey. Oh well. But then you never know when lightning is going to strike. And look at this putt. It's in. I was shocked. And that was a long putt, definitely the longest putt you've ever seen me make on video. Let's check this out again. A replay is in order. Look at this ball as it goes in. It curves around the cup. Whoa. Oh, man. A miracle. All right. Hole number nine. Whoo. I'm like shaking now. Like on the course, I'm like, I just made birdie, and then I made this tremendously long par putt. And I, I mean, would this happen, this kind of stuff happen at another course? I don't know. I mean, it hasn't yet for me on film. 
like me making a long birdie putt like that. And also the chip on seven, like I almost went in for eagle. I don't do this stuff that much. <laughs> so I think, I think in that moment, at least, maybe not the whole day, but in that moment, at least, I was allowing the, the, the positive feelings of Kahuku being there at this course that I have decided is my favorite and allowing me to hit good shots. And I, I think also the, the feeling that hmm, maybe I should just walk out to the beach. My score doesn't matter that much. I think that probably helps sometimes too because it takes a little pressure off and diverts your focus away from uh, just trying to score. I mean, I'm just an amateur golfer. What does score matter? But when you make a birdie in a long par putt like I just did, wow, that's exciting. Okay, so just trying to make par now, uh, really, for hole number nine. This is the last hole uh, on the course. 474-yard par five. It's another par five, the third one. It's a little bit shorter, and the wind is going to help you out here because you're going back inland. So you can really try to blast away. Just aim for the left side of the fairway, I would say here, because the right side has a drop-off. It's a slope from left to right going down. Other than that, the left side has tons of room. I'll show you the view. So really, I mean, this is not a particularly exciting hole compared to some of the ocean side uh, holes on this course. But you can blast away to the left side and let the wind just kind of carry it forward. And so that's what I was trying to do. I think I probably hit it, I got a little bit too far under it here with the rental driver, which was serving me pretty well, actually, the rental driver. So anyway, that was a, a tee shot that worked out. Played the wind okay. Now I've got a, a downhill lie. This is a challenge here on this on this hole. I'm trying to get the, the um, you know, the ball's a little bit below my feet. Other than that, again, I got a lot of room down the left side. There's a slope that it'll catch once you get close to the green. So I'm hoping to run it up the left side and, and let it roll down. I think I, I ended up on the right side, so I got this bunker to contend with. But from here, I've got about 40 yards, and I'm like, hmm, maybe if I get up and down here, I can get close to a birdie, if not, make a par. And like I said, I was plus three last time I played this course. So I'm starting to think about score here a little bit. This chip was not amazing. <laughs> I almost left it too short and too close to the bunker. So I've now I've got a long birdie putt. And I'm not building up this putt the way I did back on uh, the last hole. So you can probably tell I didn't make it. But I gave myself a nice chance to tap in for par and finish plus three. Cool. Okay. So a good finish for me. Actually, a very strong finish fun stuff. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, our first Psychology of Golf in Hawaii video. Uh, I, I mean, I enjoy It's fun for me to relive the experience. There will be one more in Hawaii before we're done with these um, this particular section of the channel. So stay tuned for that perhaps in a week or two. Um, the lessons from Kahuku, don't be too uh, caught up in like the condition of the course or the um, how well it's taken care of because, I mean, there's so much to enjoy with the views and the, the low cost and the vibes and the, just the feeling being out there. And for me, I mean, that, that's good psychology because you're relaxed, you're having fun. And also there's not a ton of pressure for me anymore because, well, I've been there before and I'm probably going to go back at some point in the future. So I just try to enjoy now and it's a, it's a great opportunity to not let your score be the primary focus uh, of a golf round. And I think that's, that's good psychology too. Okay, uh, on to the next one. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like. And there's another Hawaii golf video coming up very soon. Stay tuned.